What's going on, everybody? This is Alex Quinn, and you're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. On today's episode, we have Tony Shavala, CEO of Oxia Spirits. What's up, Tony? Hey, Alex. Thanks for having me on here. Look forward no, to the discussion. You. Thank you for being patient, man. We were supposed to have this interview about two hours ago, and we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but here we are. I'm very excited to start off this new year having you on the podcast because I ended last year on a serious note. You guys did some incredible events here in Miami. I got to meet you. I got to meet your team. I got to engage with your brand, and I was truly blown away, man. So thank you for being here. Thank you, and, and I hope you enjoyed the events, most importantly. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're... you're your team is doing a fantastic job at engaging with the local community. I was honestly blown away because I had never been to events the way you guys put your events together. You guys, you guys have engagements, you guys have games, you guys have contests, you guys have, you know, you guys have food, you guys have dancers, you guys have music. It's like, you know, it feels, it feels like you guys are really leaving no stone unturned and making sure that everybody engages with their brand and has a fantastic time. So well done, man. Our Basel was a blast with you guys. Thank you so much. No, we, we truly enjoy it. And, and it is about the experience, right? And, and Axia is a unique experience in itself. So let's talk about Axia. Break it down for me. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, we, we started the company a little over four years ago. And, um, you know, what, what we've produced took about three years to do. And uh, essentially what we've created is a new white spirit called Mystica. Uh, many people in Greece know Mystica as a sweet liqueur. This is nothing sweet at all. It's actually an extra dry, 40% ABV. It's essentially a base spirit that competes with the likes of gin, vodka, and tequila, mm -hmm. and has uh, lower calories per serve than vodka and gin, and right on par with tequila. How did this whole thing come together, man? Like, how, to, like how, did the, how was this born? It's a really interesting story, actually. So our two co-founders are, you know, stewards in the peer, uh, spirit, spirits industry. One he is seventh generation Bacardi family member. Okay. And Nico Kalianis is fifth generation Uzo distiller. And he's based out of Greece, of course. And um, the uh, his distillery is called Plumari, which is our distillery. And they're also one of the world's largest Uzo supplier. And they got together and, you know, Adrian really wanted to create something that would not compete with the likes of Bacardi for obvious reasons. And one thing to know, we are not linked with Bacardi in any way, shape or form. It's just, you know, he's, he's one of our co-founders. Right. And um, so that's how essentially this came about. And we wanted to take a Greek spirit to the international, essentially to an international playground, right? It's one of the first that's doing this. And we've launched late last year in, in the UK, the US, and, and of course, Greek, the Greek markets. You guys, um, so how I was able to engage with your brand was in Miami in a setting where there was a lot of uh, Spanish flavor around. How, how, how did that mix come to be? You know, how did that come together? How did you guys say, okay, you know, we're a Greek spirit. Uh, we're hitting South Florida. We're hitting a Latin demographic. We're engaging with Latin artists and people are liking our product. People are engaging with our product. Like how, how, how does that come to be? You know, I think it's interesting, you know, we, we didn't necessarily target different demographics, but it's, it's more of a, you know, unique Mediterranean theme in a, in a lot of ways. And yeah. I, I think many people, regardless of, you know, their backgrounds, they're looking for new experiences, something, something cool and unique, especially coming out of the hell of 2019 and 2020. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think this kind of fills that, that niche right now. And it's, it's, it's being very well received. I couldn't be more happy with the initial results. Right. And so you, you've been in the marketing space and the e-commerce space for quite some time now, right? So you obviously are very up to date on how to market, on how to bring a brand to market, on you know, how to expose yourself, on how to position yourself. How, bar how far back does your marketing go? How far, how far back does it go? Too far. Yeah. <laughs> so no, in all honesty, I mean, I started my career in operations, you know, kind of cut my teeth at GE Medical, you know, spent years there. And then after that, worked for a Taiwanese ODM of all things and, and was kind of bringing brands to life in the U.S. And that's really when it started. That was back in 2006. Okay. And then, you know, from there, was very fortunate, got in touch with Amazon to launch a private label brand. And they need somebody with the background that could not only launch the brand, but design and build it. 
So I went to Amazon and, and it's essentially started up Amazon Basics that we all know and love now. And then, you know, from there, uh, went to build the third pillar of Groupon, which was Groupon Goods. Makes me cry to know that they've dismantled that now, but right. uh, nonetheless, it, it grew to a billion dollars in less than a year. So as you know, th those were two really good experiences in terms of exponential growth. But of course, those were within very large corporations as well. You know, but after that, I spent some time building brands that were very, very small. So I worked for private equity firms that would invest in various different companies. And, you know, I went and led a company called Four Ocean here in Florida, which had explosive growth. And, you know, we did that through a combination of many different ways of both digital and non-digital, you know, marketing tactics and things of that nature. And so what did high school Tony want to do? Like when you're in high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, that like you, you know, you thought of yourself in the future, you know, this is what I'm going to want to do. Like, what were you thinking? Honestly, it was sales and marketing. It was sales always, and marketing. I've always had that desire. You know, it's, it's, I've always been, I would say outgoing for the most part. Yeah. And, you know, sales and marketing does, in my opinion, two things. One, you get to build things, which is fun. Two, right. you solve problems. And, you know, that's kind of carried with me throughout my career. You have. And I mean, from the conversations we've had in person, from all the tons of info that, you know, I've been able to consume about you and what you've done. It's pretty impressive, man. And it's really cool to see, you know, how you've worked for these large firms. Have you been able to make these huge contributions to, to these platforms? Right. And then you have a shift to being, you know, to being a business owner, to being an entrepreneur, is that something that you always saw for yourself or is that something that just came about and you seized the opportunity? It was the latter. It, you know, I never thought I would go from, you know, multi-billion dollar organizations to run small startups. And it was really due to an opportunity that kind of threw me down that route where it took you out of the typical corporate environment, totally different risk scale as well. Right. And I thought, you know, at that point in my career, I'm just like, this, this sounds really cool, really interesting. And I would only do it if I loved the product and if I thought it was innovative or disruptive. It has to have one or two or both of those characteristics, because then I can get my head around it and I can build it. Right. So what, what's your nationality? I'm Czechoslovakian. Okay. Um, so I'm guessing the inspiration for the Greek product came from one of your partners being introduced to the atmosphere uh, he or she was in, and then you, you know, you were able to build on that. That's exactly right. And you know, it's just an interesting and fascinating story of Mystica, which comes from a, the mastic tree crystal uh, that has thousands and thousands of years of history to it. It's just, and it's also um, well known and documented as a medical digestive. So it's actually good for your your system back, you know, a thousand years ago, they were using it as mastic gum and they would chew it because it would settle their stomach over time. Nice. Okay. I love that. I, I love when products have a history to them or, you know, they're tied to a specific culture. It really may, let, lets you transport yourself into a certain time or to a specific place. And you're able to really experience something that's different from what you're used to really. Agreed. It's, it's really a marketer's dream. You know, it goes from Christopher Columbus. Th these are all true facts used master crystals as actual currency there have been wars fought over this island the master so it's, it's an it's an island where you find this it is it's the island of hios okay C -H -I -O -S. it's just about 45 minute plane ride from athens uh, okay. within greece and just just north of turkey okay that's insane man how long did it take you from conceptualizing saying all right this is what we want to bring to market to actually having products in locations in stores seeing people consume their product how was that process so it it was about a six to eight month process you know okay. there was a pause there's a pause during covid really at the end of 2019 into 2020 and then you know we we decided to launch harder in 2021 and what we had to do first is we needed to set up distribution and so we needed to find distributors that would initially carry our product in each of the geographies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right? a mission. It's a mission, and, and, yeah. <laughs> and being a, a new spirit, and we're not one of the big four. We're not Diageo. We're not Bacardi. So you have to go there and beg them for the initial contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, that was kind of the foundation that we had to put in place. And then from there, we had to assemble their sales teams, educate them on the product, educate them on the history so that they could then go out into the field and really focus initially on 
the on-premise, which is with the bars and restaurants, right? So when right. you're building a spirit brand, that is the best way to get awareness for the brand is you need to get it into the bars and restaurants. You need to have it on the menu. So then people are trying it, they're experiencing it. And then you follow that off with the off. And then of course we have direct to consumer as well. I love what you guys are doing. Um, I was actually at one of the venues where you guys hosted an event like three days ago, but you guys had a host of the event obviously back in December. And the way you guys transformed that place was incredible. The, the way you guys engage with everybody, the way, like, also, like, you know, the staff, everybody that's around is making sure that everybody's having a fantastic time. I thought that was pretty cool. I was really blown away by the event that you guys did at Sea Spice. That was absolutely fantastic. I believe that that's one of the most beautiful locations that you could do an event in, in Miami. And it was just incredible. I remember catching myself really having a good time. It had been a long time since I went to, like, a, you know, I went to an event. I went out and... And I felt comfortable. I felt good. The type of people that were there, the entertainment, the care. It was really, really cool, man. Because, you know, being in a city like Miami, you see a ton of events take place. You know, um, everybody goes, they get into little cliques, you know, they, they have their conversation, but there isn't really ever uh, an inclusiveness, right? The, the, first, the first engagement that we had together, I remember going with my girlfriend, I went with my mom, and I went with a friend of mine. And you guys you guys had like a mixing contest, right? That's, that, that's what was going down. We met somewhere in Wynwood and you guys had like a mixologist contest. And there was, you, you guys brought us into this private room and it had, and it was darkened and it had really cool lights and it had a bunch of tables set up. And it was like a, it's like a TV show like was taking place and uh, everybody was competing to see who made the you know greatest cocktail with Axia spirits and obviously a bunch of other <laughs> uh, ingredients on the table and it was absolutely fantastic i had a great time with my mom making drinks and creating content it was just really cool man it was it had been a long time since i had felt like that like that i genuinely had a good time that, at that event you guys had these really nice baskets for us to bring home I, I have the baskets at my house with all the products that you guys put together so it's just one of those things that makes you remember a product right you know there's a lot of products on the market obviously in any specific vertical that you could think about but how is the product impacting the people that are consuming that product you know how are they talking about your product and ultimately that's what you guys are putting a lot of concentration on it's not just hey you know we're coming to market it's hey this is who we are this is what we're about this is you know we're trying to have a good time with you guys this is how we want you to engage and it's really cool man i mean for for such a short time that you guys have been on the market and you know, for all the experience that you have, you could totally tell that there's experienced people behind it. The taste is honestly delicious. And it's really cool. I really wanted you to come on the podcast because not only did I want you to talk about your experience, you know, as a marketer, as somebody that has contributed to big brands, but it's also for a lot of people that are listening to this that are perhaps doing fantastic work at a big company, right, are, are making a lot of contributions. And sometimes they're scared or maybe hesitant to make that change, to make that jump over to being an entrepreneur. It could be scary, especially after maybe having a wild career of doing incredible things and all of a sudden you're making the harsh switch. How was that switch for you? It, it's huge. I'll, I'll explain. It comes down to something I call very, very simple. And you know, it even goes back and I wanna say thank you for giving us the, the accolades for those events. And, and you know, in my book, it's all about the team. And our extended team, our partners with X7 slash Shecom Group, you know, they've, oh, been, yeah. they've been outstanding. <laughs> and They're crazy good. They're crazy good. Exactly. And that's that's where people from big companies that go to small companies sometimes trip, right? Because they're used to having teams of 100. So you've got a lot of people doing a lot of things. And plus, you've got a lot of technology because, you know, they have massive expenses that they can put into place. So you get a lot of data. So decisions are easier to make. Right. When you go to a smaller company, you're on your own, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to you have to build your team very selectively. But I think that's a positive of coming from a big company because you know you have a wide network. You know who is good. You know who you've worked with. You know who you can trust, and you start bringing them on board. I can tell you right now, I've got uh, four people in the other room that have worked for me at two other companies. You know, it's in my mind, it's all about the team. And I would say that the other thing is you're going to have to mitigate through problems like you probably haven't had to do at a larger corporation. And quite frankly, I think, you know, it's a 50-50 sink or swim. I've hired people from Amazon that I've worked with in the smaller companies, and it did not work out. Okay. It, it, it could happen like that. And, you know, one of the coolest things of, you know, having a long career, I mean, a long successful career 
is that you'll really have the chance to meet some incredible people that down the road could be the pillar or one of the pillars to one of your next projects or one of your passion projects. One of the things that, you know, like, like you're doing now, you know, you have your business and you've met some really, really smart people, successful people, A players for that matter, A players, A plus players. You, you don't have to have a massive team. That's what sometimes people tend to tend to fall short on. They feel like they need this massive team, like they need all these people to do all of these things. But what you really need is to handpick a focus group of people. Maybe they're ready, maybe they're not, maybe they're coachable, but you have to find the right people to have the right team to really pull things off. For me, for the longest time, I thought that having a big team for my business was going to be the, for the way for me to grow the fastest. But sometimes having these big teams, a lot of things get lost in translation. It's like playing telephone. You pass a message over here. And by the time it gets to the end of the line, somebody got a complete different message and things got jumbled up. So it's really cool to be able to work with really smart people. Like, you know, you just mentioned Seacom Group and everybody that you're working with. They do an excellent job. Like all the events I've seen you at, you know, you're having a great time. You're relaxed. It seems like everything is under control because having events is not easy. You know, especially when you're showcasing your brand, you're worried about something going wrong or somebody not showing up or the cameras, the food, the drinks, the lighting, the is everybody on time? It's a lot of stress. Right. But you get you, you seem to have it all under control. You seem to have a really cool people working for you. And honestly, I see it. You know, when, when I look at a brand being somebody that's been working in marketing for 10 years and I like look at all the elements of the brand, so a brand like yours, for example, for example, is it taste good? How is the positioning? How's the brand voice? How's the story? Are they staying on brand with everything that they do? Are they following up? Are they, are they distributing their content? Are they caring enough about creating good photo and video content to showcase, to share? Are they engaging with the music community? Are they engaging with the entertainment community? How are they voicing all of this? Once you have this consistency with a mix of press, with a mix of good talent, with a mix of good staff, it's the recipe for success in a brand. I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to do in the next three to five years because it's not only just a product. I just see it as like a group, like a really dope group of creatives who are trying to go above and beyond to get their product out there. It reminds me of it reminds me of a lot of cool brands that are doing incredible things, man. Tell me, what do you see for the brand in the next three to five years? Thank you. Thank you. I have to say next three, five years, we need to perfect these markets. So we specifically picked the U.S. We're focusing on obviously Florida right now. We're going to expand, but we, you know, the U.S. is representative of the biggest market. The UK, okay. we picked that because that's representative of the rest of the world. You make it in London and the U.K., you can make it anywhere. Okay. And, and then the third, we need to own the provenance. We need to, we need to have a massive presence in Greece. So the next three to four years, we'll be really building that up even bigger. There mm -hmm. are some discussions in terms of potentially uh, expanding into some other countries, but I want to be laser focused, make sure to exactly what you said. You're right. That is the recipe of a good brand. It's consistency. It's um, you, you don't stray from it and it's being authentic. The minute yeah. that you go away from that, you've lost it. People are not stupid. They, if they love you as a brand, then you got to cherish them as a customer. And if you live by that, you'll be successful. Absolutely. In any business, whether you have product, whether you have a service, customer first, experience first, because customers are the ones that pay your bills, no matter how right you try to be all the time or how you may want to push an idea in somebody's direction. Maybe they feel a different way and they perceive your product a certain way. And you have to understand that. It's not always what we think because a lot sometimes marketers, business owners, tend to feel like they know so much about their product that they can't listen to other people's advice or feedback about their product. And that stunts their growth. A lot of the times really understanding or most of the time really understanding what people like about your product gives you different ideas, gives you new collaborative ideas, gives you new ideas for new product lines or different things that you could do that help you get into different markets faster or help you get into different markets that you thought you would never be able to get into. Totally agree. Totally agree. And I think, you know, that's why we, that's why I'm here, quite frankly. I mean, you know, I think you and I spoke about it. My spirits industry background, very little, right? But they, they wanted me to come into it because I had a different lens. And the way it was kind of worded, and, and I'm not trying to compare myself to Elon Musk, I swear to God. Um, <laughs> but if you take a look at what Tesla did to the automotive industry, how much automotive industry experience did he have? But he turned it upside down. Or rockets or, or neural chips or, or exactly. underground tunnels. Like it's 
find the right people. Again, we just talked about this. Right. right. Find the right people, have good leadership, be open to learning and taking advice and taking feedback and build the right team. And you could do absolutely anything. He's talking about doing cell phones now. And I heard him in an interview with Joe Roy and talking about how he could redefine the aerospace and build airplanes, but he's not trying to do that right now and toilets and this and that. Like you could do really anything you want and you've proved it yourself. You've worked, you worked in Amazon, you work in Groupon, you're now leading a spirits company that's really like taking off extremely fast and making a lot of noise. It's really cool what you're doing, but like, you know, more importantly than what you're doing with the business, bro, or what you've done with Amazon or what you've done with Groupon and all of your other accomplishments as a person, Tony, how do you want to be remembered, man? You know what? The one thing that was probably the most important throughout my career was the mentorship that I had throughout the years. Mm -hmm. I would not be where I'm at without having a leader kind of pulling me along the way and showing me different things. So okay. what do I want to be remembered for, honestly, is being able to see the people that I've worked with over time, running their own companies, enjoying life, doing whatever they want to do and being as successful as they can be. That's really a, a true legacy beyond just Tony's known for Axia, right? I'd yeah. rather be known for 50 brands from some great people that I used to work with. That's what I would like. Yeah, honestly, I could relate to that like deeply because, you know, one of the main things for me, you know, my main business is advertising. I own a, a successful advertising agency and out of that naturally come opportunities to invest into other businesses. One of, the, one of the most beautiful things is that people that work with me at my agency or through my agency or directly or indirectly, I've been able to run into some really incredible human beings that are way smarter than me in, in, in one way and another way or just in general. Like that's another thing in leadership. You, need, you don't always have to be the smartest guy or girl in the room. Like you want to surround yourself probably with people that are way smarter than you and know exactly what to do when you don't know what to do it. And that believe in you and trust your leadership to trust them to get the job done the right way. And for me, one of the biggest things that has catapulted me into many different avenues that I've been able to invest into is I have brought people along with me. I've said, you know what? I don't want to be the only one winning. That sucks. That's boring. It honestly is like, when you're the only one winning and winning and winning and people are just looking up at you and the people around you are not winning, in my opinion, that environment isn't a healthy business or growing environment because if you're doing extremely well, the people that are with you, if they believe in you, if they believe in your idea, they have the knowledge, they have the experience, could take you to lengths that you would have never imagined. Like, you know, one of the closest people for me at my agency is Michelle, right? Michelle was actually at the at one of the events that I went to that I attended with you guys. And she was blown away as well. She's a marketer. She's been working in the space for 10 years. And she was like, Alex, this is really, really crazy. I just had a really good time. Like I hadn't, I hadn't seen something like this in a long time. So people like that, people that stick with you, people that show up to the office late, that pick up the call, calls late, that don't just look at the clock that way to, to clock out. People that really see that vision could be people that could be your partners and other businesses, could be advisors for you and other businesses, could be on the board of directors for other businesses, or just could be lifelong friends that you could just run ideas by. Hey, what do you think about Axia? What do you think about my new business? What are your thoughts on this? That is something that is extremely valuable to me. And what I think is one of the biggest ingredients in, in the success of my businesses, which is bring people up. Don't be the only one that wants to win. Be willing to hear ideas and just be an all around person that wants to help. Totally agree. You, and I think it comes down also, the team's just going to have passion. If yeah. you've got a person with passion, they will get anything done. Tony, look, I know you have a crazy day. You have a busy day. I know in a few minutes you have a phone call, but I want to thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I really look up to your brand. I look up to a lot of the work that you've done. I was extremely blown away from our in-person conversation, from everything that I read. Look, man, you have an incredible career. A lot of people have a lot to learn about you. I hope you keep doing your thing. I hope that one day we can have you on again so we could chat a little bit more about the explosive growth of Axia. For now, what is the best way to find out updates about you, about your business, getting involved? What's the best way to get a hold of you guys? I mean, really, our Instagram is uh, posted see a lot of the new events that we're having, a lot of the things that we're doing there. And, and of course, we're just about to launch kind of our influencer strategy. So you're going to see a lot more of us out there, specifically really in the Miami market, focused on some key groups and demographics. So I think, you know, that's how you're going to see us. That's how you're going to be able to kind of keep up on us. And, uh, you know, of course, we'll, we'll always keep in touch for sure. 
and guys, if you haven't been in, in touch with our other passion project, not Hustle Inspires Hustle, but our magazine, Contrast Magazine, you'll be able to keep in touch with events in music, entertainment, fashion, and you'll be able to see a lot of the content that we create at events that Axia has. And you'll be able to see how dynamic their events are, how, entertainment they, how entertaining they are. If you guys want to learn a lot more, don't hesitate to go on our website, hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash podcast. Find the webpage for this episode. Check out the show notes that are going to lead you to the Axia social media, to the Axia website, and a ton of the, of the other things that we've talked about on this website so you could get to know a little bit more. Tony, thank you so much for being here today, man. Alex, thank you a lot for having me. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, seeing you in person as well, and I hope to see you again soon, man. All righty, guys. This is Alex Quinn, Tony Shavala, Hustle Inspires Hustle Podcast. We'll see you in the next episode.